I'm in Paris for the weekend. Let's go. This was our hotel breakfast on day two in Paris, which if you have not seen my day one in Paris video, then make sure you check that out. So that way you can follow along for my whole backpacking Europe series. But back to the breakfast because uh, spoiler alert, this breakfast hit the spot. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep exploring more of Paris. It's day two in Paris and we are headed somewhere. It has occurred to me that where I just pointed is not where I'm actually headed. So that's not a hint, but uh, we'll be there soon. Take you along with me, but I had breakfast this morning at my uh, hotel that I'm staying at. European, uh, just like hotel or hostel breakfast just cannot be matched. I am so, I'm so impressed. I had wonderful cheese, bread, uh, yogurt, all, all the good things very fueled for my fun filled day. Also yesterday, day one was the day that I landed, but we, I feel like still did so much stuff. And a hot tip for if you're going to the Louvre is definitely get your tickets in advance. Uh, it feels like everyone there had their tickets already, but if you're also going just to see the Mona Lisa, then go in, go directly there, um, and then just kind of wander around. It's huge, it's really easy to spend a ton of time there. Uh, so you maybe wanna just give yourself the amount of time uh, that you desire, because there's so many amazing museums and things to see in Paris. Uh, so you don't want to get too caught up, but it's a wonderful place to visit if uh, you're in Paris and it's your first time and you want to see some of the sites. <laughs> Put a stick in! Oh my god! <laughs> that is incredible. I was wondering what that was. Wow. All right, one you euro. Got this for the train. One euro. Let's try our one euro vending machine coffee. Okay, low key, why is this amazing? <laughs> coffee a lot. Coffee a lot. Is it like a dragon? It's not, go. it's not even bad. I feel like I'm... C'est la vie, on sait jamais alors Respire les problèmes qui nous mènent nus Il y en a toujours d'autres, on continue This is where Louis the 16th and Maria Antoinette got married he also apparently used to sit up top on the upper level and then everyone else uh, sat below him so they would like kind of look up to him because he was the king. Wow, that's a king if I ever saw one. They also have a garden so you can go and visit. You can spend so much time here. So if you want to come for a full day, you can come do a tour of the Versailles and then go out to the gardens. And you can do a tour of the gardens, but gorgeous. In certain seasons, I believe they have different flower exhibits as well. So just check the website if you're coming to visit. Love the hairdo. And here is the upper part of the chapel. So this is where Louis sat and then where we were down before is where everyone else sat. You can just see how grand it all is. I mean, the whole place is grand. But yeah, he had all of this up here. This is the drawing room. So they would have like parties and gatherings in here. Oh, just a little wall art over here. Only about uh, 40 by 40. Or 40 by 60, that's not a square. Oh my gosh, look at the ceiling.
They painted the wall to make it look oh, like yeah. the rest of the palace. So it like keeps going. It's so cool. There's all sculptures in the garden. It's crazy. Wow. This is the bedroom. the Hall of Mirrors. It's their banquet room. And apparently mirrors were a luxury at the time. So this was just like something people had never seen or heard of, especially this grand grandness of it. The point of the mirrors is so that you can see the gardens behind you, which is so, just so beautiful. This is insane. This is the queen's room. I think these are the largest paintings I've ever seen. So the bedroom that we saw was like his like performance bedroom because every morning he would have people lying around and he would get into bed prior, prior to then coming, I guess. And then he would wake up and they would watch him wake up. So then he would have his first hard boiled egg of the day. Uh, and it was his morning rise that there was people would take witness to like his people that were working for him. Uh, there was another bed chamber where he actually slept, but that was close today. Also, I listened to the Rick Steves audio tour. Download his app if you're coming uh, to visit Paris or anywhere, honestly. Uh, and there's just a free tour that I was able to walk around with and follow along. It was a little hard because the place is so big to like find the exact rooms. But if you have a map or you can just like you know listen closely, uh, you'll figure it out to be able to know which rooms to go into to listen to. And it's an awesome place to visit. We want to get butter. Oh, look at this little butter. We decided to have a picnic at the Eiffel Tower. We have all of our remnants down there of everything we got. We literally just went to the grocery store, got a bunch of baguettes and cheese uh, and snacks and little cookies, things just to, to munch on and some wine. Uh, and you can bring that all here. It's very common. People are even walking around selling bottles of wine, but just go to the grocery store, uh, explore, uh, see what you can find, and then bring it here and have a lovely day out by the Eiffel Tower. Or at least that's what I did. And I am having a wonderful time. Stay tuned for a taste test of this jam. It's coming to my channel very soon.
we came to Notre Dame. Now I have been here before prior to the fire, which I think happened in 2021. Uh, and you can maybe sort of see that a lot of it's blocked off. You can't really go inside anymore because they're obviously trying to do restoration to keep it preserved. But I was happy to see that it still looks pretty okay for the facade. Uh, if you don't know, it's a cathedral that just has beautiful, or at least used to have beautiful architecture on the inside. Uh, it's been in a lot of literature and it's an iconic uh, landmark in Paris. Why are you doing through that way? What do you mean? Why don't you take the cap off? I'm just fine. <laughs> it's delicious. Paris is some of the most delicious uh, water in the world. It's actually a true fact because they put minerals into their water uh, to make it better for you and have, I guess, more nutritional value. I guess that's the best way to describe it. Okay, hi, this dinner was 11 out of 10, currently debating booking a flight to go back here. We had braised leeks with a poached egg, some gazpacho, a burrata, pasta, steak and bone marrow, some fish and veg, and the dreamiest creme brulee sampler. Because why have one when you can just have all three? Also, the atmosphere was giving meeting old friends, tucked in a familiar restaurant, locals were here. Actually, there were a bunch of locals here, including a group of people who were celebrating a birthday. And the waitstaff had one of the children in the party actually come over with the birthday cake. Like they carried it over to whoever was celebrating their birthday with the candles on and everyone sang. It was so adorable. I just about melted because of how cute it was. <laughs> But this is the end of day two in Paris. Stay tuned. I have a day three in Paris coming up soon. And in day three, we check out one of my favorite neighborhoods in Paris. So be sure to follow along on my Backpacking Europe series. And I will see you real soon. Au revoir.